Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephron Olive, and we got a special video today. So, I have an article up on the website, just went up, that is talking about updates for our budget magic decks for Amonkhet. So basically, every standard budget magic deck, all the way back to Kaladesh, I think we talk about 15 decks in all, a ton of decks, has updates for Amiga, and I wanted to do just a quick video to talk about the updates for the YouTube channel. I definitely recommend checking out the article because with 15 decks, I gotta go really quick. I mean, even a minute per deck is gonna be 15 minutes, so we just gotta fly through these, so they're gonna be really brief in video form, but check out the article if you want a more in-depth explanation, you want downloadable deck lists, all that kind of stuff. Also, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments, ask me in the comments to the article. Anyway, we are starting with the oldest deck, so starting with decks right after Kaladesh released, moving up to the present, so let's get to this see if we can fly through these decks and make this video not be an hour long. So, first off, Teamer's Summonings, the classic Metallurgic Summonings combo deck. Not a ton of changes here. The big one is we trim down A Natural Connections and we cut the three Cultivator's Caravans for Spring to Mine. Spring to Mine, basically a Cultivator's Caravan that triggers Metallurgic Summonings, also has the upside of Aftermathing, which makes us a 6-6 at instant speed with Metallurgic Summonings and draws us two cards. The only other change, pull from tomorrow's over a couple copies of Glimmer of Genius down from 4 to 2. Pull from tomorrow's just super good with our ramp. It can make us a 10 10 token, completely refill our hands. So, fairly minimal changes here. Next on our list, we have Poisonless Infect slash Green Red Pummeler slash Green Red Energy, whatever you want to call it. The kind of combo deck where you throw pump spells, your electrostatic pummeler, and this one has changed a lot. Not so much in cards, but in style of play. So here's the cards that are missing. Uncaged Furies, Larger Than Life, a couple of Harness Lightnings. Basically, the deck has moved away from being all in on the pump spells on Pummeler plan to being a more resilient resilient deck that splashes blue and can sometimes combo off with a new addition actually in fling which is super sweet you make a bunch of energy you double the power on your pummeler and then you can fling and fling is a huge upside that you don't have to attack with your pummeler so you don't get got by blessed alliance you don't have to combo off when your opponent's untapped, you can wait till they tap out for something, but ideally the deck's going to be more resilient, more long tusk cubs, add some blue mana for rogue refiner, a couple of Arlen cords. The other card that is not in the deck, but if you have them should be in the deck, is Ronas Indomitable. Super sweet in this strategy, not just a big beater, but also works well with the electrostatic pummeler combo, makes up for some of the pump spells that we cut. If we have like 12 energy and 5 mana with a Ronas and a pummeler, we can target the pummeler with the Ronas double 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 the power fling it at our opponent do this all at instant speed when our opponent can't interact and win the game that way so I didn't include Ronis because of budget concerns like 35 bucks for two copies but if you have Ronis or you want to spend some money I think about $35 for the two copies slot in two over a couple of long tusk cubs Energy Fog is next up, and it's actually the most changed deck out of any on our list. In fact, it's changed so much that it's not even really Energy Fog anymore. Instead, it's kind of a Turbo Fog deck. So, basically... <sighs> I'll try to break down these changes the best I can in the simplest way possible. Definitely check out the article because there's so many changes. 18 cards switched out, which is a huge percentage, but Haze of Pollen, strict upgrade over Repel the Abominable. Haze of Pollen not only cycles, but it's always a fog, while Repel, in some matchups where our opponent has humans, isn't really a fog, so we get rid of that downside and we get cycling. Cast Out comes in over Dreadlock Trap. You're probably wondering why we're not Energy Fog anymore, and basically, once we start cutting Energy cards, we just gotta cut them all because they're so dependent on each other so you'll see it kind of just snowballs once we cut deadlock trap more energy cards are out as far as finishing the game dynavolt tower out fateful showdown out we get approach of the second suns really sweet way to finish the game after fogging for a bunch of turns and then commit to memory might not look like a finisher but it is it lets us redraw all of our fogs by shuffling our graveyard back in to make sure we stay alive and it makes our opponent refill their hand so with our fevered visions they're just going to keep dealing damage and kill our opponent that way. So we kind of guarantee ourselves the Fever Vision wins because our opponent can't get empty-handed. The rest of the changes, Bounty of the Luxa and Pull from Tomorrow, 
come in in the card advantage slots. Bounty's so sweet, it ramps us into pull from tomorrow, but also our other big finishers like Approach draws us a card every other turn so we keep hitting our fogs, and pull from tomorrow in the late game just draws us so many cards, so it replaces Wildest Dreams and some copies of Glimmer of Genius. So that's updates from Energy Fog, now Turbo Fog. Next on our list, we have White Black Fabricate, which gets a lot of sweet new additions. So the biggest changes are Anointed Procession and Hidden Stockpile. So these were suggested by Wedge over at the Mana Source in a deck deck. At first I was like, oh, that looks fun for casual, but it's probably not that competitive. Then I got absolutely wrecked by Hidden Stockpile making like three or four tokens a turn with Anointed Procession, and it was insane. So we go down the Bygone Bishop, which if we're using Hidden Stockpile to make creatures instead of Creature Creatures isn't as good. Go down Eile as the Sack Outlet and replace it with Hidden Stockpile. Kind of a direct swap there. As far as the rest of this stuff, we get a single Bantu. Might want two in the deck. It's bad if you draw multiples because it's legendary and indestructible. But a really good Sack Outlet. We cut the Vampiric Rites. I think Bantu is just definitely better than Vampiric Rites. And then Cast Out comes into the removal slot. It replaces an Anguish Unmaking and a Stasis Snare. And Cast Out's just a less painful anguish on making and a more flexible stasis snare and it can cycle so just clearly better in most situations than the other options Next up, we have Combustible Ramp, the big Gear Hulk deck looking to mill some stuff and kill our opponent by milling Decimator Provinces and Bedlam Revelers and so forth. And super slight changes here. Basically, go down Deathcap Cultivator, up for Naga Vitalist. Vitalist is better than Cultivator for two big reasons. Number one, it makes red mana and our deck gets green wet red, so Deathcap Cultivator making black mana isn't really an upside. Also, Naga Vitalist, having an extra toughness is better than having an extra power when it comes to mana dorks in being in this deck so it doesn't die to like the plus one of Liliana the Veil for example so very slight changes here also I'm not talking sideboard changes you should be playing magma sprays and some different sideboard options as well but if you want to see some sideboard changes head to the article check them out on the deck list on the site next up we have our first no changes and that is reckless panharmonicon as you can see on the deck list there are sideboard changes magma sprays by force uh some things like that so some slight sideboard changes but main deck 100% the same basically reckless panharmonicon cares about artifacts while Kaladesh block had a ton of them there's very few artifacts in Amonkhet, so there's just not really any good new options for what we're trying to do with Reckless Panharmonicon. Next on our list, we have Blue Black Key Control, which actually gets a ton of new toys, and one of my favorite cards from the news at Drake Haven. So Blue Black Key Control is kind of built for Drake Haven. It might not be obvious at first glance, but the whole idea of the deck is to be discarding stuff to Key to the City, to Haunted Dead. So with a Drake Haven, instead of Welcome to the Fold, which was a little bit ambitious as a discard payoff. Drake Haven is just so much better, so much cheaper, so much more repeatable. Uh, this gives us another line of attack where every turn we're just making Drakes, making Drakes, beating our opponent down. As far as the rest of the deck, we bring in a bunch of stuff that's not only good for our deck, another discard outlet and Crypt Breaker, Sensor as a counter, Archfiend of Ifner, one in the main, some more in the sideboard to fight creature decks, but all these cards also work with the Drake Haven plan, so we can use them to trigger our Drake Haven, so we have a ton of ways to trigger Drake Haven, plus we still the same old sweet plan of Haunted Deads getting back prized amalgams and so forth and then Void Shatter and a single copy of From Underneath the Floorboards get cut to make room for Sensor as a counterspell and some of the other stuff we talked about and last but not least never replaces Ruinous Path and I think this is just a strict upgrade not just for our deck but for most decks I was really harsh on Aftermath during spoiler season but honestly Having a free card in the graveyard, which is really important in our deck here because we're discarding stuff to key to the city and whatnot, but having a free card, even if that free card's really bad and underpowered like Return, is still an upside. So I think that Never to Return should just replace Ruinous Path in most decks. Up next, we have Gear Hulk Stompy, and I cheated a little bit on this one. So, the idea with our budget magic upgrades is not to just play all the most expensive cards. We're still trying to keep things budget friendly. However, Gear Hulk Stompy was unbudget at no fault of ours. When we made it, 
uh, Verderous Gear Hulk was really cheap, then since it spiked and gotten really popular and really expensive, so the deck was already not budget friendly, so with this one, kind of pulled out all the stops, put in some more expensive cards, and just said, whatever, we're gonna play uh, whatever we want to in this one. So, we have Channel Initiate over Lone Dryad. Lone Dryad was not very good. Channel Initiate, so sweet in this deck, because we're not looking to make mana forever like some decks. Instead, we just want to ramp into a Gear Hulk, and by that time, maybe we've used all our counters on Channel or Initiate, but whatever, we got a 3-4 to beat down with. Then we have some big changes with the creatures in removal. News Constrictor was kind of a meta choice. It was to block Spell Quellers. This deck came out when Blue-White Flash was super popular, and I thought News Constrictor was a good way to fight it. Clear Shot is a fight spell, but what we do get is Ronas Indomitable, which is absurd in this deck. It is such a powerful 3-drop, it tramples up our stuff to win. Also, it turns Prey Upon into the green Swords to Plowshares, <laughs> or the green Fatal Push. We can just fight anything with Ronas as Death Touch, and it's indestructible, so we can't get blown out and kill anything that our opponent has. Next on our list is Paradox Engine Wombo Combo, and not a ton of changes to this one, but we get a couple of really good ones. So, Cogworkers Puzzle Knot out of here for Pyramid of the Pantheon, which is an early game artifact to power up our War of Inventions, also turns into the most powerful mana rock in our deck. We can even put all the counters on it in one turn, thanks to the combo, tapping and untapping with Paradox Engine. Also a one mana way to cast a spell to trigger a Paradox Engine to untap all of our other mana rocks. And then we get Pull from Tomorrow, which is just draw 30 cards or something once we combo off over Glimmer. We can also cast Pull for just two mana just to trigger Paradox Engine, untap our mana rocks, and start comboing off. So we get a lot more flexibility over Glimmer of Genius. Pull from Tomorrow is worth Worse at exactly 4 mana, maybe at 3 and 5 mana as well, but at lower cost and higher cost, it's just so much more powerful that the flexibility makes it better. And last but not least, we get one non Amon Cat edition, and that's Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger as a backup finisher, going down one copy of War of Invention, and the reason for this is Dispossesses. The old deck was 100% all in on Aetherflux Reservoir, which was fine. There wasn't a great way to get punished by that. However, with Dispossesses, and people playing Dispossesses in their sideboard, uh, we definitely need a non-artifact finisher just in case our opponent manages to Dispossess our Ether Flux Reservoir. Next, we have Infinite Bant Harmonicon and no updates for this one. Infinite Bant Harmonicon, unfortunately, is dead with the banning of Felidar Guardian. Wanted to mention it for the sake of completion, so we talk about every deck. Basically, you just can't make infinite mana with Panharmonicons anymore because we don't have Felidar Guardian. You can do some weird stuff with Wisp Weaver Angel, but it's not the same. You can't blink lands. It doesn't do the combo, so rest in peace, Infinite Bant Harmonicon. It was fun while it was around, but overall, the banning of the Combo Cat Felidar Guardian is for the greater good and makes Standard much better as a result. Next up, we have Mono White Servos. Very slight changes here. Basically, we get rid of Stasis there for Cast Out, which is pretty much just a better main deck card. And then in our janky one of slot where we did have animation module for comboing off, we now have anointed procession, which isn't insane in our deck because a lot of our token makers come down on turn two or turn three, but it's still fine in the late game. Making four servos with a servo exhibition instead of two gives us some value there. I think it's fine as a one of. Marvelous Paradox, no changes here. Basically, energy is a super parasitic mechanic and in a combo deck, like this, there's not really any flex slots. If you look at this deck, every single card, except for the Paradox Engine and the War of Invention to find Paradox Engine, is making energy. So we can't really replace energy cards. Even kinda only okay, not great energy cards with non-energy cards, because the entire idea of the deck is just to make as much energy as possible, so we can keep flipping our Aetherworks Marvel, keep playing more stuff, eventually win the game. So there's just nothing for it from Amonkhet. We do get a couple sideboard things, like Magma Sprays and Dissenters Deliverance, but generally unchanged except for the sideboard. Getting near the end of our list, we have Sram Aid, which very minimal changes. When you think about this deck, it cares about two things. Artifacts, most specifically equipment. We really didn't get any in Amonkhet. There's one equipment, it's not better than what we already have, and also the Improvised Mechanic, which 
obviously isn't in Amonkhet. So we do make a couple changes though, but these are with old cards. Basically, we go up from three to four in Vendor's Goggles and Stitcher's Grafts, and go down one Griff's Boon, down one Skeleton Key. Basically, I should have been doing this the whole time. This, I think, is the correct build of the deck to play four of Inventor's Goggles and Stitcher's Graft. I didn't realize it till after playing the deck a bunch, but play four of those, you'll be happier as a result. And finally, last but not least, we have Inspiring Eudrazi, the last standard budget magic deck before Amonkhet came out. And here, very slight changes as well. You've noticed a lot of the recent decks, they, they are based on mechanics that just aren't supported in Amonkhet. With this deck, it's big, colorless things. But anyway, we get an Essence Scatter and a Negate over a Deadlock Trap and Prophetic Prism. Basically, Essence Scatter, a good counter in the early game against all the creature-heavy decks. Negate, also super helpful in fighting Aetherworks Marvel, which is getting more popular. And then Pull from Tomorrow's over Glimmer of Genius. Stop me if you heard this one before. You probably can guess by now. I think Pull from Tomorrow's is absurdly powerful. I think it might be the best card in Standard. It's really close to Sphinx's Revelation, and it's super sweet in this deck in specific, because we have four Inspiring Statuary, so we can tap all of our random artifacts to help pay the X cost and cast it even bigger. And once you cast a Pull from Tomorrow uh, for six mana, for seven mana, for eight mana, it's just so hard to lose the game. Unless you're, like, about to die in the backswing, it's so hard to lose from there. So, anyway, that's been our budget magic updates for Amonkhet. Hopefully this is helpful. If you have some sweet ideas of Amonkhet cards that can fit into budget magic decks, or any decks, really, let me know in the comments. As I mentioned before, make sure to follow the link in the description to go over to the article on the site. That's where you can find... All the deck lists, downloadable deck lists, uh, more discussion about the changes, see the sideboard changes, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.